Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy, happy Wednesday. Let me make sure and go ahead and check and see if I'm live on my end. Bear with me one second. Oh, I forgot to put the. How is everyone doing on this beautiful Wednesday morning? Okay, bear with me one second. Let me just make sure that I am live. Okay. Yes, I am on. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Bear with me one second. <clears throat> let me go back here. There we go. All right. So let me go ahead and start sharing and tagging some people. Oh, there we go on my phone. So as I do that, may you, hope you guys enjoy this um, this video of the good morning song. You guys know I like to share the good morning song. All right, so let me go ahead and share my screen. You guys can enjoy this song, the good morning song, while I go ahead and share, tag and invite some people, let everyone know that I am on during story hour. Okay, let me see if you can hear that. Okay, let me one second. Yep. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. One, two, three. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, and how are you? Early in the morning, I say good morning. Hello, and how are you? Good morning, good morning. Hello, and how are you? Early in the morning, I say good morning. Hello, and how are you? In the morning. Good morning. I hope you guys enjoyed that song. Let me go ahead and pause the video. All right. So let us begin. Good morning, everyone. For those that don't know, my name is Miss Tiara, and I'll be doing Story Hour with you guys this morning. And for those that don't know, also this week we celebrate National Library Week. So make sure you guys visit your local library branches. Um, there are some that are having... Um, some events in the park and also at the library. So make sure you guys check out and uh, you can also get the schedule on our website, www.jclibrary.org and you can find out the timings and the activities that they're doing at the library. So make sure you guys go ahead and uh, take, uh, you know, check out your local library and see what they are doing for National Library Week. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. You guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the good morning song. So good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Good morning, Aiden, Max, and Sam. Good morning. All right, so being that we said the good morning song, right, let's go ahead and sing another song. And we're going to sing The More We Get Together, right? So if you know this song at home, make sure you sing aloud and clear. And if you don't, you can learn with me this morning. 
Also, too, if you can, if you can help out by please sharing, tagging, and inviting, let everyone know the library is on. So if you know any parents at home that may have little ones, please feel free to tag them down in the comment section below. Also, if you can, if you can hit on those hearts, those thumbs up, that all lets me know you guys are enjoying Story Hour. Let me go ahead and share it real quick to one more place now that it came to my mind. <laughs> Let me just share real quick. All right, so we're gonna sing the more we get together. All right, so now is the time to also too, if you have any instruments at home, now is the time to grab them so you can use them as we sing the songs. All right, so we're gonna sing the more we get together. Ready? On three. One, two, three, here we go. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Because your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Again, good morning. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Why? Because your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Yay! Good job, everyone. Good job, boys and girls, if you sung with me at home. And if, if also two of you learned it today, uh, good job. <laughs> All right, so now let's get into our next song. And the next song we're going to do is we're gonna shake our sillies out, right? So we can get all our sillies out. So that way we can focus to the wonderful, wonderful stories that I have for you today. All right, so we're shaking our sillies out. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three, ready? We're gonna <laughs> shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Oh, I forgot my cool glasses. Let me put my cool glasses on. We're gonna shake, shake, shake our sillies out, shake, Shake, shake our sillies out and wiggle our worries away. We're gonna what? What's next? We're gonna clap, clap, clap our crazies out. Clap, clap, clap our crazies out. Clap, clap, clap our crazies out and wiggle our worries away. What's next? We're gonna jump, jump, jump our jingles out. Jump, jump, jump our jingles out. Jump, jump. Jump our jingles out and wiggle our worries away. We're gonna, ready? We're gonna shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out and wiggle our worries away. We're gonna yarn, yarn, ah! Yarn our sleepies out, stretch, ah! Yarn. Yarn our sleepies out. Yarn. Oh, yarn our sleepies out and oh, wiggle our worries away. We're gonna shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out and wiggle our worries away. We're gonna clap, clap, clap our crazies out. Clap. Clap, clap our crazies out. Clap, clap, clap our crazies out. Wiggle our worries away. We're gonna jump, jump, jump our jingles out. Turn around, jump, jump, jump our jingles out. Jump, jump, jump our jingles out. Wiggle our worries away. Wiggle, wiggle our worries away. Wiggle, wiggle our worries away. Bum, bum. Yay! Yay! Good job, everyone. Good job, boys and girls. I hope you guys were shaking and wiggling your sillies out. Good morning, Betsy. Good morning. Comment their names so I can say good morning. <laughs> yes, parents, please feel free to comment your child's name if they're watching, so that way I can say good morning to them. And good morning, Anita. Good morning. How are you? All right, so now that we sung some songs, now it is time for story time, all right? I got some cool, cool stories. I also got some uh, two books I'm going to read to you today about libraries, right? And reference being that we're celebrating National Library Week this week. 
So I will be reading you books about the library, all right? I know some of you boys and girls miss going to the library. I know I do miss seeing your beautiful faces at the library, but uh, hopefully soon uh, we'll get to see each other soon. All right, so let's begin. Good morning, Layla and KJ. Good morning. Thank you for tuning on in. All right, so now put on those listening ears on, right? So we can focus on these wonderful stories that I'm going to read to you boys and girls this morning. All right, here we go. So let me go ahead and get my, oh, Miss Tiara forgot to get her hoopla ready. That, that's where uh, Miss Tiara gets her uh, ebooks from. So if you haven't taken advantage of that service yet, boys and girls, make sure you do. They have some wonderful, wonderful different titles. And you can search anything, anything you want to learn about, maybe, um, uh, maybe animals. They have plenty of books about animal. And also, too, if you want to maybe one day feeling lazy and you don't want to read, you can have, they have audiobooks where you can listen to a story. How cool is that? Good morning, Sebastian, Adriana, and Victoria. Good morning. How are you, boys and girls? All right, so here we go. So the first book, let me go ahead and share my screen. So the first book I'm going to read to you about is about the library. All right, maybe you some some of you boys and girls have never been to the library or don't know what a library is. Well, I'm going to read to you a book about the library. All right, and like I said, this is Hoopla, and all you need is your library card. All right, to get this service, and you can, like I said, you can either listen to a book or you can read a book online. All right, <clears throat> and you can get this uh, access to on our website, www.jclibrary.org. And then you just look for the tab, digital, uh, digital services, go on there and you'll see all of the amazing digital services that we have. We also even have tutor.com. All right, for some of you boys and girls that may maybe may need some homework help, you can go onto tutor.com free and you can actually chat with the tutor. All right, and they're, they're, if you're having trouble with a, maybe, maybe let's say a math problem, and they'll explain to you step by step on how to do that math problem. So also to check that out. All right, so here we go. The book is Library. All right, that is the title of the book. Oh, let me go ahead and go back. Sorry about that. Let's see, I was reading it. <laughs> and I forgot to set it back in the beginning. All right, so this book is called The Library, and it is written by K.C. Kelly. All right. Like I always say, I know some of you boys and girls are learning about titles and authors and characters and settings and titles. So this is the title library. OK, and the author is K.C. Kelly. All right. So here we go. Hope you boys and girls have on those listening ears on so you can listen to this wonderful, wonderful story. All right. Ready? Here we go. Hmm. What is in a library? Right. Probably some of you guys or boys and girls are wondering that, right? What is in the library? Well, let's go find out. Let's see what's in the library. We see books everywhere. What kind do you like? Right? There are so many different types of books in the libraries. You got books about cooking, math, animals, anything you could think of. We have, we have it all. <laughs> all right. And so Jim picks a sports book. So here we see here, Jim, right, this young man here, and he's reading a book about sports, right, a book about sports. All right, and here we have, we have a young lady here who's using the computer. I know right now the library are, are uh, well, we're not closed, but I know you boys and girls can't come inside, but um, one day we'll, you guys will be able to come back inside and enjoy the many things we have that we offer at the library. Amanda wants a book about birds. She looks on the computer. Then she goes to the right shelf. Yep, so when, when you do come to the library, we have a thing that's called a card catalog. All right, and there you would look, of, you can search by subject, title, author, series. Um, even if you just have a keyword of something you're looking for, you go to the card catalog search the book and it'll let you know the location where you can find the book. All right, so that's what this uh, young lady did. All right, Anne and Jill need help. A librarian shows them where to find a book. 
Yep. So, all right. Maybe some some of you guys don't know how to uh, look on the shelf for a book, but that's what we librarians are here for. We're here to help. All right. And there we have, we see the librarian who is helping these two young ladies locate a book on the shelf. All right, don't forget guys, if you can hit on those hearts, those thumbs up. Also, if you can please help out by please sharing, tagging and inviting, let everyone know that we are on doing story hour. All right, and in this picture, we see a young man pulling a book off the shelf. There are so many books. Peter can't decide. He chooses a picture book. All right, so Peter here, or they didn't show, he chooses a picture book. I think this was Peter here. And we see him choosing a picture book. So that's just a book filled with many, many pictures. All right, maybe some, maybe little words, but more pictures. So those are picture books. All right. It's time to hear a story. Yes, on the library, right? Many of you guys used to come for story hour, but now we do it virtually, right? The kids sit down to listen. And that's what I miss the most, doing story hour for you guys in person, even though I love it doing here, doing it virtually, but there's nothing like doing it in person where I'm able to interact with you boys and girls and see your beautiful faces. So hopefully soon we'll be able to uh, get that back. <laughs> and there we are, we have a librarian who is doing story time. See, she looks happy, see? <laughs> right, we see the kids raising their hands, asking her questions. So <laughs> our trip is over, but there's good news. We have books to take home. So yep, at the library, you can go in, all right? You can search the shelves, get your books. And with your library card, you can check out your books. So you can take those books home, all right? For a couple of, uh, maybe a couple of weeks. And then you have to bring them back and get some more new ones. All right, so if you haven't, haven't, if you don't have a library card yet, ask mommy or daddy to uh, get you a library card and it's free. All right, all you would have to do is show a proof of address and you can get your library card. All right, so things to see at the library. Now, yes, now we have a book drops, right? For those that do the curbside pickup, you guys can also too, yes, we have curbside pickup. I forgot that you guys can re uh, make a book request online. All right, and then you can come in two to three days later and get your books, all right? <clears throat> so here are some of the things you may see at the library, all right? You may see a tablet, you may see a globe, all right? There are so many things you're gonna see when we do open back up to the public. You'll see many, many, a lot of books, many different things at the library, all right? And so that is the end. <laughs> Let me get my clapper, yay! Hope you guys enjoyed that book. And that book was called Library Written by K.C. Kelly. All right, guys, don't forget to, guys, visit your local library, your local branch. Like I said, this week, we are celebrating National Library Week, and we have so many different events for the community. So make sure you guys um, <clears throat> check out your local library, um, local library branch. All right. <clears throat> All right. So now let's get into our next book. Let me go ahead and close that one. All right, wasn't that cool book about the library? So many different things you can do at the library. All right, hopefully soon we will open back up and I can't wait to see all you boys and girls, can't wait. All right, so now let's get into the next book. Let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, so the next book is called, also another book about the library. All right, but this book is about Pete the Cat. You guys know, no, no, I love Pete the Cat. And so this one is about him going to the library. Pete the Cat going to the library. All right, so this one is called, the title is called Pete the Cat Checks Out the Library. All right, and the author to this book is, is, uh, is by James Dean. All right, so here we have a nice picture of Pete the Cat reading a book. Look, he's reading a book about cars. All right, so Pete the Cat checks out the library. And let's see, written by James Dean. All right, I hope you boys and girls still have those listening ears on. This is a cool, cool story. I love Pete the Cat. All right, if you are looking for something to read, boys and girls, 
Search up Pete the Cat. He has many, many, many different titles. And so you guys know that I love Pete the Cat. <laughs> so sorry if I read, I read him a lot, but uh, <laughs> I love Pete the Cat books. All right, Pete the Cat checks out the library. Here we go. All right, here we go. Ready? Pete's mom is taking him to the library for the first time. The librarian gives Pete his very own library card. Cool, says Pete. The librarian smiles. Time for the tour. All right, so Pete is at the library for his very, very first time, and he got a library card. I will be excited to a library card. All right, let's see what he does next. The librarian takes Pete through the library. There is a big desk where people wait to check out books. Pete sees some of his friends reading at a long table. It's very peaceful and quiet. How relaxing. Yes, boys and girls. So when you do go to the library, yes, it is very quiet, right? That is a perfect, perfect place to go and study and read some books if you want some peace and quiet. All right, so here we see Pete the library. I mean, Pete the library, Pete the cat, he's here, All right? He's at the desk, the circulation desk. All right, it's what we call. And that's where you will go with your library card to check out the books. You can take the books home that you've picked you know, for you to read. The librarian takes Pete to her favorite room. There are lots of Pete-sized chairs and tables and shelves. There are books of every shape, size, and color. What do I do now? Pete asks. Now you read a book, the librarian says. Which book should I read? Asks Pete. You can read any book you like, says the librarian. Pete looks around. There are so many books. All right, so it looks like Pete is in a children's room, right? Because they have the little small chairs, the children's area. So they have the little small chairs for you boys and girls to sit, right? And he's like, oh, what am I going to read? There's so many books. What am I going to choose to read about? Let's see what he does next. Pete picks up a book all about airplanes and jets. All right, so he decided to read a book about airplanes. Good morning, Charu. Good morning, Savish. Good morning. All right, so he's picked a book about airplanes. How cool. He reads it and pretends he's a stunt pilot. Good job, Pete. He uses imagination. He flies super, he flies a super fast jet and does loop the loops and spirals high in the sky. All right, so he used, while reading, he used his imagination. That's what sometimes you should do, boys and girls, when you read. It makes reading more fun when you use your imagination with it. Then Pete finds a book with dragons, wizards, and unicorns on the cover. Uh oh, reminds me of a Harry Potter book. <laughs> he reads it and imagines that he's a suit, that he's a powerful wizard using magic spells and a special wand to defend his castle against a fire breathing dragon. Oh, doesn't that sound cool? So there he is. Good morning, Kizzy. There he is, Pete the Cat with his wizard hat on, right? He's using his imagination. He's even on a unicorn, standing on a unicorn, fighting away a dragon, as you guys can see in the picture. <laughs> Next, Pete opens a book about spiders and insects. Ooh. He reads it and imagines that he is a scientist studying all types of critters in the wild. He has to be very still to study some critters and very fast to study others, all right? So this time he chooses a book about ooh, squiggly, ugly bugs. Ooh, and there he is again using his imagination, um, studying some spiders, right? Looking at a spider with a magnifying glass and he's catching butterflies. Oh. Then Pete chooses a book with all sorts of scary monsters on the covers. On the cover, it is a book about fairy tales. 
right? So if some of you boys and girls don't know what a fairy tale is, well, those are books like The Three Little Pigs, um, The Gingerbread Man, The Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So those are fairy tales, all right? Pete reads it and pretends that he is in a dark, spooky forest trying to outsmart a big, bad wolf. Mm, sounds like a story we know, right? Like the three little pigs. <laughs> Pete puts that book back on the shelf. He's like, oh, it is too scary. <laughs> so he didn't like that book. He put it back super quick. He thinks that the fox is super scary. Pete opens a book about pyramids in Egypt. He reads it and pretends that he is an explorer riding a camel across the desert. So now he's found the book about e uh, pyramids in e Egypt, all right? And climbing to the top of a giant pyramid, all right? So there he is using his imagination again, right? Pretending he's riding on a camel. And then here he's pretending he climbed all the way to the top of a giant pyramid. Wow. Hopefully one day Miss Tiara will get to visit Egypt. <laughs> I love the pyramids. Next, Pete picks a book with all sorts of robots on the cover. He reads it and imagines that he is a robot at a dance party. So there he is dancing like a robot using his imagination. He's reading a book about robots. His arms and legs make whizzing sounds when he moves. When Robot P speaks, he says, bleep, blop, bleep, right? <laughs> he is pretending to be a robot. Good job, Pete. Next, Pete picks up a book about superheroes. Oh, my favorite. He reads it and makes believe that he is a superhero, right? He flies around the city in a colorful cape, chasing bad guys and saving the day. All right, like some of you boys and girls may, right? Read books about superheroes like Spider-Man, Batman. What are the other ones? The Marvel, so many different superheroes. Um, and you boys and girls could read, all right? And here he is reading one, pretending to be one as well. <laughs> How cool is that? All right, then Pete spots a big book about the ocean and all its creatures. He reads it and imagines that he is a scientist in a submarine deep in the Atlantic Ocean, looking for whales, looking for whales and squids and sharks. All right, so there he is using his imagination, right, pretending he's in a submarine, all right, and exploring under the sea. And look at the many different, we have octopus, sharks, whales, right? even jellyfish. So there he is using his imagination. There are so many wonderful books to read at the library. Pete can be whatever he imagines with the book. You're right. Reading is super groovy. Yay. So yes, boys and girls, you can find any, any book at the library. I mean, like I said, right now you can't go in, but you can search, um, we have a catalog online you can search. We have even curbside book requests that you can search um, certain titles or series of books you're looking for. Um, so you can still get books, all right? So and reading is super groovy. Yay, that is the end. Yay, good job, everyone. Yay, that was an awesome, awesome book. I love Pete the Cat. He is one of my many, many favorite series um, that I like to read. Give me one second. Let me just get some water. All right. So now being that we've read two books, now it's time for some singing. Yay. Oh, that thing became blurry. There we go. All right. So now let's get into our next song. And the next song I want to do with you boys and girls is, have we done Old McDonald had a farm? All right, let's do, we'll do Old McDonald Had a Farm. All right, here we go. Ready? On three. Old McDonald. One, two, three. Ready? Here we go. Old McDonald had a farm. E I E I O. And on that farm, he had some. Let's see, what did he have? What animal is this? Can anyone tell me what animal this is? This has some nice 
fluffer, nice and white. Let's see, I gotta get new ones. <laughs> but if you said lamb or sheep, you are right. This is a sheep. Bah. Right? And sheep go, bah. right? So, with that being said, with a bye bye here and a bye bye there, here, bye, there, bye, everywhere, bye, bye. Old MacDonald had a farm, E I E I O, and on that farm he had some. Let's see what he had. He had some. Oh, what animal is this? Can anyone tell me what animal this is that Old MacDonald had on his farm? This is a chicken. And what does a chicken go? It goes, plop, 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 right? So, with a pluck, pluck here and a pluck, pluck there, here, pluck, there, pluck, everywhere, a pluck, pluck. <laughs> oh, McDonald had a farm, E I E I O. And on that farm, he had a, let's see what animal is next. He had some, oh, let's see. He had a what? What is this, boys and girls? Can anyone tell me what animal is this? This animal has some web feet, right? Nice yellow fur, nice orange beak. Can anyone tell me what animal this is? Well, if you said duck, you are right. This is a duck. And a duck goes what? What does a duck go? Duck goes quack, quack, right? So with a quack, quack here and a quack, quack there, here, quack, there, quack, everywhere, a quack, quack. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm, he had a, what animal is this? Can anyone tell me what animal this is? Can anyone tell me this animal has? I mean, this animal is black and white, has a nice brown long, I mean, has a nice white long tail, has dot, uh, polka dot, I mean, has uh, yeah, polka dots on it. <laughs> if you said cow, you are right. This is a cow. And what does a cow say, boys and girls? Can anyone tell me? A cow says, moo. So with a moo moo here and a moo moo there, here moo, there moo, everywhere a moo moo. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm, he had a, let's see what's the last one. He had a, what is this? Can anyone tell me what animal this is? This, this animal barks. Can anyone tell me what animal that you know barks? Well, if you said doggy, you are right, right? Because doggies go, woof, woof, woof. So with the woof, woof, here and a woof, woof, there. Here, woof, there, woof, everywhere, a woof, woof, woof. Old MacDonald had a farm, e i e i Yo. <laughs> Good job, everyone. Yay! And that was the old McDonald song. Yay. Good job. All right, so now let's get into our next song. And the next song I wanted to do with you guys is, I don't know if you, some of you boys and girls heard of the song, She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain. All right, so if you do know this song um, at home, make sure you sing along with me at home. And if you don't, you can learn it with me this morning. <laughs> All right, ready? On three. Here we go. She'll be coming around the mountain. Here we go. One, two, three. Here we go. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Yeehaw! She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Yeah. 
And what's next? And we'll all go out to greet her when she comes. Hello. And we'll all go out to greet her when she comes. Hello. And we'll all go out to greet her and we'll all go out to greet her and we'll all go out to greet her when she comes. Hello. She'll be riding six white horses when she comes. Whoa, back. She'll be riding six white horses when she comes. Whoa, back. She'll be riding six white horses. She'll be riding six white horses. She'll be riding six white horses when she comes. Good job. Then we'll all eat purple pizza when she comes. Ew, yucky purple pizza. And we'll all and we'll all eat purple pizza when she comes. Ew, yucky. Then we'll all eat purple pizza. Then we'll all eat purple pizza. Then we'll all eat purple pizza when she comes. Ew. And we'll all read books together when she comes. Good job. And we'll all read books together when she comes. And we'll all read books together, and we'll all read books together, and we'll all read books together when she comes. Good job. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountains when she comes. Yay! Good job. I hope you guys enjoyed that song. That was also one of my many, many favorite childhood songs I wanted to share with you guys, sing with you guys uh, this morning, which will be coming around the mountain. <laughs> All right. So being that we sung two songs, let's get into our last two books. All right. I got some cool, cool stories that I want to read to you guys, the last two books. All right, and then we'll sing some songs and call story hour to an end. All right, let me go ahead and fix my screen. So, boys and girls, now if you still now is the time you can put back your listening ears on. All right, listen to this wonderful, wonderful stories that I have for you this morning. All right, here we go. So, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, I don't know if you, some of you girls, hey Judy, good morning. Some of you boys and girls have ever read. Harold and the Purple Crayon. All right, that is also one of my many favorite childhood books. I, I uh, grew up on this book. All right, so we're going to read about a little boy who's named Harold, and he has this special purple crayon. All right. Oh, sorry. Let's go back. See, Miss Tiara was reading. Harold <laughs> oh, and the. See that one? This book is an audio book, but I'll be reading it to you myself this morning. All right, here we go. Harold and the Purple Crayon, written by Crockett Johnson. Okay, Ooh, excuse me. So this book is 60 years old. I'm sorry, guys, it goes back. Give me one second, because it's an audio book. This book is 60 years old. I can't get into the front cover, but it is 60 years old, this book. Harold. So this book has been around for a long time, and it is such, such a wonderful story. All right, so if you haven't read this book yet, now hopefully you hope you guys enjoy this book, but it's such a wonderful story. All right, and it's about the little boy here, Harold, and that purple crayon. All right, so here we go. Harold and the Purple Crayon, that's the title, and it's written by the author by Crockett Johnson. All right, here we go. It's a wonderful story. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. All right, so after thinking it for a long time, here he is. See, he has, he always has that, that purple crayon with him. All right, let's see what happens next. There wasn't any moon and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight. And he needed something to walk on. All right, so he had to, there was no moon, there was nothing for him to work on, walk on. So what do you think he does? Yeah, he makes it, he draws it himself. Here he is drawing a moon, right? And then here he is drawing maybe a sidewalk so he can walk. Let's see. Oh, there we go. He made a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost. And he set off on his walk 
taking his big purple crayon with him. All right, so there he is. All right, he made a straight path and now he is on his way on his walk. And let's see what happens during his walk. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path. So he left the path for a shortcut across a field and the moon went with him. All right, so he took a shortcut. He felt like he wasn't getting anywhere with the straight long path. So he takes a shortcut and let's see. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. All right, and there he is, he's drawing a forest, but he didn't want to draw a big forest like forests are known to be. He drew a small forest with just one tree in it. All right, let's see what happens next. It turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be very tasty. Harold thought when they got red. All right, so he drew an apple tree. All right, and he can't wait to taste those apples. All right. It says once they get red, he's going, uh, once they get red, they'll, get, they'll be very tasty. <clears throat> so he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. It was a terribly frightening dragon. All right, so he drew a dragon to protect that apple tree. He doesn't want no one touching that apple tree. So he put a dragon as a guard. Ooh, would you go near the apple tree if you saw a dragon? I don't think I would. That looks scary. It even frightened Harold. He backed away. His hand holding the purple crayon shook. So even Harold, who drew the dragon, is also scared of the dragon. All right, he's even scared of the dragon. Look at this dragon. Suddenly, he realized what was happening. But by then, Harold was, was over his head in an ocean. All right, so being that he was scared of the dragon, right, and his hands were shaking, and he was drawing, not realizing he was drawing an ocean. And as we see him, he, he sunk in the ocean. Oh no, poor Harold. He came up thinking fast. What do you think? He's in the ocean. What do you think he draws next? Right? In no time, he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. Right? So now he draws a boat to save him from drowning in the water. As we see him here climbing into that boat that he just drew. He quickly set sail and the moon sailed along with him. All right. So there he is in his boat. He drew a sail. Now he's in his boat, safe and sound, sailing in the water. After he had sailed long enough, Harold made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. All right. So now he drew land and there he is he drew an anchor through the anchor in the water right so he can the boat doesn't get away all right let's see what happens next the sandy beach reminded harold of picnics and the thought of picnics made him hungry so he laid out a nice simple picnic lunch all right so there he is right he he, he drew a beach and then him drawing the beach made him think of food. So there he is drawing himself a nice little blanket and he drew him some lunch, All right? How cool is that? Imagine you can have a purple crayon and you can draw, draw anything that you want and you, you'll get it, right? How cool is that? There was nothing but pie, but there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best, All right? Even though he drew just pie, that's what he likes to eat. That's his favorite. He drew nine of them, nine different kinds of pies. Hmm, <laughs> yummy. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. All right, so he happened to realize he made too much pie 
He only ate a little bit. There's so much left. All right, and he doesn't like to waste food. So let's see what happens next. Ah, so Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up. So he drew a moose and a porcupine, por por uh, porcupine to finish all of that pie. And off he went looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. All right, what an adventure, right? How cool. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see. So he decided to make the hill into a mountain. All right, so at first he drew a hill, now he decided to make a, a mountain so he could see where actually he's at. If, it went, if he went high enough, he thought, he could see the window of his bedroom. All right, so here he is drawing a mountain. I wonder how high he's gonna draw the mountain. Let's see, wow. He was tired and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. Yeah, he's had a long day. All right, he hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. All right, so there he is. He's drawing that high, high mountain. All right, he's trying to look for his bedroom. He wants to draw a mountain high enough that he can see his bedroom window. But as he looked down over the other side, he slipped. Oh no. And there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling and fit in thin air. Oh, no, he fell off the mountain and he is, there's nothing, look, under him, he's falling. What do you think he's gonna do? I hope he doesn't get hurt. Let's see. But luckily he kept his wits and his purple crayon. He made a balloon and grabbed onto it. See, he came to quick thinking, he drew a balloon. <laughs> And now you do the string, you see him drawing the string. All right, and let's see. Oh, he made a hot air balloon. <laughs> How cool is that? And he made a basket under the balloon big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. All right, so he made a hot air balloon. All right, good idea, Harold. All right, so now he's safe. He's in the hot air balloon, high, high, high up in the air. All right, and he can't even see a window. They can't even see a house. That's how high up he's in the air. Let's see. So he made a house with windows. <laughs> and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. All right, so he thought, hey, if I can't see my house, I can't find my house, why not draw my house, right? As we see here in the picture, he drew himself a house. All right. None of the windows was his window. He tried to think where his window ought to be. All right, so none of the windows, all of the windows he drew here, none of them were his bedroom window. So now he's deciding, hmm, where can I draw my bedroom window? Let's see. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. All right, so now, as we see here, he made a building full of windows. And he's looking for, oh, look how, he made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. Look, he just keeps drawing on and on. All right, look at the many different sizes and shapes of the buildings, of the windows, All right? And he keeps on drawing, he's just keeping on drawing. He's looking for his bedroom window. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think where it might be. Hmm, I wonder where his window is. Let's see, he decided to ask a policeman. <laughs> the policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him. All right, so right, he couldn't find, he can't seem to find one. So he decided to draw a policeman and ask the policeman where his window is. Let's see. And he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in bed. Then suddenly, Harold remembered. Hmm, let's see what happens. 
he remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. It was always right around the moon. So he remembered, he saw the moon, he stopped and he saw the moon. And he remembered that his window, right in the beginning of the story, right, was where the moon was, because that was the first thing he drew. Right? And then Harold made his bed. He got in it and he drew up the covers. Right? So he remembered, yep, where his window. Right? Now he's drawing himself a bed. He knew his window was there, right? He found his window. And now he is in bed where he wants to, where he wanted to be. The purple crayon dropped on the floor, and Harold dropped off to sleep. All right, so now finally Harold is in his bed, fast asleep. He had a long day of all that drawing, all right, and searching for his window. And that is the end. Yay! Hey, good job. So let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen. All right, what time is it? I think I have, let me see if I can get into the next book and then we'll call story hour to an end. All right, give me one second. Let's see. So the next book I want to read, I don't think I'm going to have, let me see, is how to put an octopus to bed. All right, how to put an octopus to bed. So this is the last book. All right, the last book of story hour. This should be pretty quick. And then we'll sing the I Love You song and then we'll call story hour to an end. All right, this one is also a cool story. So this book is how to put, how to put, um, how to put an octopus to bed. All right, so how can we put an octopus to bed? That is so cool. So let's see. Oh, and it is written by Sherry Dusky Rinker. All right, that is the author and it's illustrated by Vivian Schwartz. All right, so the illustrator is the person who, wrote, who drew the stories in the book. Okay, so here we go. I hope you boys and girls have your listening ears on still. This is the last book of story hour. All right, so here we go. Giggly, squiggly, oh, so wiggly, super silly, can't sit a silly. All right, hold on, let me move my screen, I'm sorry. With Mama O and Octopop, Little Floyd just never stops. All right, so here we have a family of an octopus. We have Octopop, Mama O, and then we have here, Little Floyd. <laughs> but now, Mama Yar Ma Yarns, it's getting late. Let's get to bed. It's nearly eight. Oh, okay, I'll lead the way. And then he's off in a bubbly spray. All right, so it's time for them to get going. It's eight o'clock and they're tired. They want to go to bed. Bath time. Floyd has a giant grin. I'll fill the tub. You two get in. You have to get clean every day. That's what you two always say. Bear, you sit there and don't get wet. You can see how clean they get. All right, so it is time right before we go to bed. We Take a bath. It's bath time. Mom and Pop stand by confused, a tad concerned, a bit amused. They think about what Floyd just said. He thinks he's putting them to bed. <laughs> so Floyd here thinks he's putting his mother and father to bed instead of him going to bed. I'll check the water. It's just fine. Here. Have some bubble bath of mine. Ta-da! <laughs> Floyd gives a little spin. Now it's ready to jump on in. <laughs> but those bubbles, all those bubbles catch Floyd's eye. Bouncing, floating, flying high. Floyd tries to grab and pop a few, then piles them up to go right through. All right, so he put the bubble bath in the bath <laughs> and he, he jumped right in the tub. And Floyd is in. And right away, Floyd starts to splash about and play. Floyd giggles, squiggles, swims for joy to wash that wiggly boy. But wait, Floyd squeals, we're not through. You both need your bath now, too. <laughs> he says, we're not done. You mommy and dad need a bath too. 
Suddenly one arm makes a splash, then another, and then a thrash. Another arm makes a plop, and then a great big splashy flop. And then two arms together, pop. Let's see. The eight arms all go up and drop with that giant super splash, soap and toys fly high, then crash. Bubbly water is everywhere. One big bubble lands on bear. Now we're all clean. Wow, that was fun. Now let's dry off and then we're done. All right, so they're done. Look like they're, they're done with bath time, right? All wrapped up in a towel to dry, Floyd wiggles out and gives a cry. It's not time for bed, not yet. You need to brush, did you forget? We'll all get our toothbrushes now. Just watch me, I'll show you how. And very soon, Floyd, Ma and Pop are soaked in foamy toothpaste slop. And the mirrors and the counter and step up chair, the walls, the floor, and teddy bear. All right, so he's made a big mess with toothpaste, All right? Oh no. Okay, let's go. Now follow me. Let's see how quick you two can be. Into their room and record time as Teddy's dragged along behind. Get ready for the nighty rumble. The octo jammy tangle tumble. Twist and lift and hold on strong. PJs are on. But something's wrong. Oh, what's wrong? They already taken a bath. They brushed their teeth. They're putting their pajamas on. What's wrong? Let's see what's wrong. Okay, no problem, little guy. We'll just give this one one more try. It looks a little not quite right. That's part too loose. That part's too tight. Some arms holes have too many arms. Some holes have way too few. Floyd's head stuck in an armhole there. Okay, this just won't do. All those squiggly arms and all those sleeves, a giant octo mess. Ma and Pop keep working hard to get Bouncy Floyd all dressed. So here Floyd, little Floyd here is having trouble putting on his pajamas. And Mom and Dad are trying to help him get his PJs on. Another try, now really tangled, twisted, mangled, Strangly angle. Floyd laughs a bouncy belly laugh at all the tangled trouble. And then, oops, as Floyd jumps all about, out sneaks a little bubble. <laughs> the three of them determine now, try it one more time. And when they all stay back to take a look, all the PJs are on just fine. All right, so they got all the PJs on. Oh gosh. Okay, okay, you're almost ready. I just need to grab your teddies. Found them. Floyd yells over joy. Hmm, what's that you're holding, Floyd? Hmm, don't be silly. These are bears, not the bears in those hands there. But the bears were like a tiny bite. No, sir, absolutely not. The bears have had enough tonight. The little Floyd is being sneaky. He's trying to eat a sandwich and it's time for bed. We're good to go, says mama. Now we're all ready. Grab your teddy. Everyone, it's time for bed. Floyd's parents kiss him on the head. Eight little arms wrapped in a hug round his parents oh so tight. And then Floyd whispers, I love you both. And click off goes the light. Do we have long? Okay, no, okay. <laughs> all right, real quick. Floyd's wiggly arm stretch way out straight. A straight reaching up toward the sky, he yawns a great big tired yawn and lets out a long deep sigh. I'm so sleepy now, says Floyd, from that big job I had to do. It's not easy to get you both to bed. You're a lot of work, you two. I'm, I'm almost finished, guys. But mom and pop are so wiped out, they're both snoozing nice and sound. They were trying to get Floyd to sleep, but the job got turned around. So the parents fell asleep and Floyd is still up. Floyd turns one last somersault, rubs his eyes, stretches his head. He reaches out for teddy bears and cur teddy bear and curls up into bed. It's peaceful, dark, and quiet now. The day is finally through. 
Floyd whispers into Teddy's ears, Bear, I saved this one for you. And that is the, okay, that is the, and I'm so sorry I'm over my time. Let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen. So that screen, that is the end. So I have to call story hour to an end. Uh, normally I usually do the I Love You song, but it's 12 one and I don't want to cut into anybody's program. So thank you all for you guys for tuning on in. Everyone have a wonderful day. Don't forget, visit your local library. We're celebrating National Library Week this week. So look on, uh, you can go on our website, jclibrary.org. Check out the schedules of events of what your local library may be having. So check that out. And I will see you guys again Friday. I have a program, National Unicorn Day. Make sure you join me. It's at two o'clock and I will see you guys again on Friday. Everyone just be safe. Mm, hugs and kisses and have a good day. Bye, boys and girls. I'm sorry, I gotta cut it short. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.